Hi guys, this is JP from FSI Panel. I recently received some requests by email asking me how to quickly set up an approach on the Phoenix. Is it all automatic? Do I have to set my cockpit manually? And how long does it take? So basically I decided to uh, reply by doing this video where I will show you exactly what you have to do if you want to fly a quick approach using FSI Panel 2020 Standard Edition and the Phoenix A320. So first of all, let's go into world map and I will select the uh, A320. We can take the uh, Phoenix one, that's good. And we will practice today in Zurich on runway 34 as one of the uh, user I was mentioning was flying from runway 34 in Zurich. So that's basically what you have to set. So set your aircraft at the runway where you want to do your landings, set your timings, and for the weather condition, we are going to use just live weather. It's quite hot today in Zurich, so that's good. And finally, click fly. All right, I will see you in a couple of seconds when the simulator is ready. All right, here we are. Simulator is ready. We are ready to fly. I will click ready to fly and I'm on my Airbus in Zurich on runway 34. As you can see, I will not touch anything on the cockpit at all. We have a D4 FCU, we have the wrong QNH. I just loaded the aircraft and you don't need to do anything on your Airbus. The only thing you need to do now is the following. So let me show you a quick recap. So the first thing to do, we just did, is to load your Airbus at your desired airport and runway. Secondly, you need to set your zero fuel weight and the fuel to match the desired landing weight for your training. So this is completely up to you what you want to set for your fuel and your passengers. Then set up your approach in FSI panel and finally fly the approach. All right, so let's start with point two as we already loaded the Airbus in Zurich. Good, so to load the Airbus, nothing easier than the EFB. Just go in your EFB you can use it from there, or you can as well load it from the FMS. It's completely up to you. What I do usually, I go to mass and balance. And there, as you can see, you have the planned passengers and boarded. So I can change here whatever I want for passengers. Let's put 150 passengers, one ton of cargo, and I will put around five tons of fuel. And if you're happy with that, you load your aircraft instantly and that's it, my aircraft is loaded. Now I have the correct weight for my flight. So we're gonna be at 62 tons with a Mac, a Mac to gross weight of 28.4. So that step is done. That's the only thing we need to do. Now we can start FSI panel and set up the approach. But before that, just one thing I want to show you, make sure you have the latest ARAC for your Airbus and the same ARAC in FSI panel. Otherwise, you might have some mistake in the programmation of the MCDU. All right, so this is done. Let me start FSI panel. All right, FSI panel has started. And as you can see, it detects automatically that we are in Zurich on runway 34, so that's fine. The VFR that you see here, some people were asking me, I would like to switch to IFR. This is the actual weather if you are using live weather in Zurich. So that doesn't mean you cannot fly IFR if you set the weather by yourself. But actually, right now with the live weather, the weather in Zurich is considered as VFR. All right, then I will just show you the options for the uh, Phoenix as we are talking about the Phoenix. So if you go to setup, under options, this is where you can see the airport database. So my Naviga Navigraph cycle is correct. That's the active one. And if you go to the Phoenix options, you have a couple of options right there. First of all, you can say, do you want FSI panel to program your MCDU? So that's good to have it tick. Do you want FSI panel to set the zero fuel weight and the CG? Why not? Here you have to make sure that you are using the same unit in your aircraft that the one that is set in the options right there. So right now I have kilograms. So if I go to my Phoenix, it's important that my Phoenix is in kilogram as well. Then we've got the next one is set QNH wind and temperature. 
So that's to set the approach page basically on the MCDU. And finally here on that first step, you can see the MCDU typing speed. So I suggest you to go to fastest. And if you get some errors when FSI panel types in the approach, just reduce a little bit the speed. Then you have your default auto break. What do you want FSI pa panel to set as default for your auto breaks when you are doing an approach? Then you have the default landing flaps. Do you want FSI panel to set flaps three for landing or flaps full if you are on final? I will leave it to a flaps full. Then you have the after landing flow. So that's uh, convenient if you are flying an approach, you land the aircraft, you vacate the uh, runway, and now you have to do the after landing flow. Looking up and down, now it's very easy. You just retract your speed brake and FSI panel will act as your co-pilot and will do all the action as per the FCOM, even starting the APU. So you just have to taxi your aircraft to the gate. Set manage speed on final. Do you want FSI panel to uh, set the speed on manage? And finally, this is if you want to use a special cockpit lighting for night or so, then you have a special file. This is in the user manual. I will not go into detail for that feature right here. All right, so this is done. Now, if we go to the main screen, we are already in Zurich. We are on runway 34. Of course, you have many options with FSI panel where you want to position your aircraft from all different positions. You can change the distance in base by just clicking on the figures, changing the distance. You can do anything you want. But for that specific scenario, uh, sorry, tutorial, I'm going to show you how easy you can fly an approach. So let's say we'd like to go on long final. So I click on long final and now right there, I have what FSI panel is intending to do. So we're gonna be in a profile final, which means gear down, flaps full. Do you want flaps three? You can change it right there. This is not anymore the default, but is let's say you want to practice for once a flaps three, just click on flaps three and you have the flaps three. So we'll try a flaps three now. So I have flaps three and I will be in final configuration. As you can see on the summary right there, I am going to fly an ILS runway three, four. I will be positioned eight nautical mile on final and my altitude will be 3,900 feet. If you're happy with that, you click move aircraft and then FSI panel will start working on your approach. So as a quick reminder, when you do that and you start the approach, do not interfere with FSI panel until you get the control. All right, so I'm going to click move aircraft, move aircraft, sorry, and we'll see what happened in the aircraft. All right, move aircraft. We get that window telling us that FSI panel is setting the flaps. So you can see that flaps are set to three now as we selected flaps three. We have the altitude which is set to 3,900 feet by FSI panel. And then when this is done, FSI panel will ask you to set your thrust lever to climb detent to start the approach. So now I just have to move my thrust lever to climb detent and then FSI panel will start moving the aircraft and then we will not touch anything. This is very important. We will just watch the show and wait for FSI panel to give us the control. So let's go ahead and move the thrust levers to climb. Then FSI panel tells you that it starts and now we just watch the show. As you can see now the FCU is set. The auto throttle will be turned on. The aircraft is going down to about 3,100 feet. Vertical speed has been set for us and now the cockpit is set, the lights, the seat belts, everything is set as required. And then FSI panel will start working on the MCDU. You can see that right now. So FSI panel will set anything you need for your approach. Here it's setting the weight. And then it will select the arrival, ILS 34. And then as we set, we want the weather then FSI panel will set the QNH, the temperature and the wind in Zurich right now. This is working if you are using live weather. All right, as you can see, we have the auto brake to low. We have the terrain on display. We have the uh, managed speed. As we said, we want managed speed. We have our localizer and glide slope deviation shown right there. And FSI panel is telling us now that it is ready, so aircraft ready. Hold your brake for three seconds to take control. And right now the aircraft is in a position freeze. It will travel a little bit forward and it will be bring back by FSI panel to the eight miles final. So that position freeze right now allows you 
to set anything you want. If you want to set the right minimum right there, you can go ahead and set the minimum. I don't have it by heart. Let me have a look at the chart. And the minimum is 1588. Here we go. So basically, as you can see, that's basically the only thing I need to set. The rest is done, done by FSI panel. We have the uh, correct lightning as per the position. We have the uh, speed brake arm. You can see that the landing memo is all green. So basically, we are ready to fly the approach. So right now, I'm ready to take over the control. So I will just hold my brake for three seconds as requested by FSI panel. So let's do that now. And once this is done, FSI panel will tell me, you have control. And now the only thing I have to do is arm the approach, engage second autopilot if required. And as you can see, we have a lock captured. Glide slope is arm, and we are reaching our famous eight miles that we were looking at, at 3,900 feet and coming established on the glide slope. So I will move forward for the approach, and I will show you then the after landing flow and the landing report. So let's move quicker to the ground. All right, we are about to land. Let me go back to the cockpit view now as we are approaching runway 34. So everything is good. I forgot to mention that as we were going for flaps three, you can see that FSI panel has as well set the GPWS for flaps three. This is all done automatically for you. All right, let's take over. Let's take the control and try to do a landing. I will try to land a little bit left of center line. This is for the demonstration. So you can see the landing report and we will try to float a little bit. So a long landing to the left of the center line. All right, let's take the autopilot off. And let's try to do a long landing slightly left of center line on purpose just to check the landing report. So let's go a little bit to the left and I will refuse the ground, which is a common mistake when we are flying. So three white. Now we have to be careful not to be too high. Just land at the end of the touchdown zone, a bit high and slightly to the left of the center line. Here we go. So end of touchdown zone, not very good and I will slow down right there. This was just to show you uh, what you can do with FSI panel. Reverse, speed brake, and going back to idle. We are back hitting the next one to the right. All right, so you saw that we can fly an approach really within a minute, you are in the air and you can fly your approach. So let's vacate the runway and I will show you the after landing flow, and then we'll have a look at the landing report for this beautiful landing that I screw up today. All right, we are vacating the runway. Make sure your speed is below 30 knots. That's very important. And now we will start the after landing flow by FSI panel as I have the option enabled so that I can concentrate on my taxi without looking up and down. All right, so let me stop for the demonstration so you can see what is happening. So I will stop right there and I will start the flow by retracting the speed brake. So I retract the speed brake and now FSI panel will start the after landing flow. You can see the speed, the, sorry, the lights. Then we will see the flaps moving up. Basically everything as per the FCOM, the APU is starting. And then the only thing you have to do is taxi your aircraft to the gate. So that's the after landing flow. It's switching off as well the weather radar, the terrain, and you are basically uh, ready to go. Even the transponder is back to uh, standby. So all set for you just to taxi your aircraft to the gate. As easy as that. All right, let's have a look at the landing report. So after the landing, you will get this landing report green button shown in FSI panel. And if you click on it, then you get the landing report. So you can see that I was on the Phoenix A320 in runway 34, the wind, the temperature. We have the METAR. So this is working if you have actual live weather. My landing distance, as expected, I wanted to be by the end of the touchdown zone, which is 900 meters. So that's quite correct with what I said on purpose. So you see that I was long landing. This is to show you that we have a training required. 
I was left of center line as briefed five meters. My rate of descent was good at the touchdown. My IIS was 140 and I was at a wings level and the pitch. You can see here my deviation from the localizer and the deviation from the glide slope. Pretty nice. By clicking on that button, you just save that landing report. If you want to take it uh, later on, it will be in the setup under landing report, and then you have all your landing reports if you save them. All right, so that's how easy it is to fly an approach with FSI panel. Now we have the aircraft sitting on ground in Zurich, right there. We just did the after landing. And let's say I would like to try the same approach, but this time from, uh, let's say, left hand vectors. So nothing more easy than that. Just bring back FSI panel, select left hand vectors, and then click move aircraft. Now FSI panel will set the flaps to flaps one as we're on vectors. The altitude will be set, I think again to 3,900 as we are coming vectors for eight miles final. And then when everything is ready for you, FSI panel will ask you to set your thrust levers to climb detent, which I will do right now. We are going in the air. Uh, again, do not touch anything. Just watch the show. FSI panel will set everything for you. Now we have the altitude alert. Doesn't matter. Just wait. That will be uh, cleared in a couple of seconds. Master caution is because we don't have right now a destination. It's, it's been done now by FSI panel. And now the alarm is gone. FSI panel is finishing the MCDU. It will set ILS 34 for us. You can see that we have here the uh, runway center line. So basically we are on the nice vectors as expected. And the speed is to manage. So the aircraft will reduce to S bug right there. And we will get the information that our cockpit is ready. That's it. The aircraft is ready. All your brake for three seconds. So that's what I'm doing right now. I have the control, the only thing I have to do, arm approach, second autopilot if needed, and you can fly your second approach in a row within a few seconds. If you want to change your MCDU, go ahead and change it. Before taking control or after taking control, it's up to you whether you, your time management, if you are fast enough on the Airbus, you can take control, arm the approach, and now modify, for example, the next active waypoint, for example, direct to Zurich with the inbound uh, for the runway uh, 34. All right, before I forget, guys, don't, for don't forget to subscribe, sorry, to the channel. And if you have any question or comment still on how to fly approaches on the Phoenix, let me know in the section down below and I will be very pleased to answer your questions. Thank you for watching. As always, stay safe and I wish you many safe landings using FSI panel. By the way, this is valid on FSI panel standard edition. Everything I show you today, is available on the standard edition. The advanced edition gives you a couple or more features. Let me show you that quickly. I will, I will show you FSI panel again. So on the uh, advanced edition, you have the training scenarios where you find a lot of training scenarios with ATCs, with uh, session instruction notes. So this will tell you exactly what's gonna happen in your flight. You can read it or not, this is up to you. And you will get complete ATC then you have a complete failure panel. If I want, for example, now to fail an, an AD, IDG, for example, a generator, let's, let's fail the engine generator number one, and we will fail it whenever we are at, uh, let's say, 3,800 feet. You can see that right now the aircraft is at 3,965 feet. So let's put altitude MSL minus 3,800, which means descending, so trigger when the aircraft descend through 3,800. Arm now, and now you can see it's armed. And if I go to the simulator, then I should get the uh, master caution and the aircraft generator is gone. That's it. So that's the difference between standard and advanced edition. It will let you go a little bit further with what you can do with training scenarios, airline flights, and the uh, panel. Uh, that allows you to fail anything on your Airbus at any given time. All right. Thank you guys for watching. I wish you safe landings. Stay safe. See you next time. Bye-bye.